Hello, welcome to Real Life, the video diary that helps you to understand what life is like living with an electric unicycle. And here's what's coming up in this episode. If I'm honest, I'd be highly surprised if at the end of this uh, I've not been reported to the police or my name is on some kind of register. See people starting to look out the windows with angry looks on their faces. Okay, so there seems to be two things that EUC riders care about more than anything else, certainly when it comes to buying their next wheel, and that is speed and range. It would seem to be the further you can go and the faster you can go, the better. And anyone who's been left behind on a big group ride out will know exactly what I mean. In this episode then, I'm going to be taking a look at battery life of an EUC and I'm going to find out how all of us can make the most of what we've got. I'm going to give you some tips about how to look after your battery, maybe prolong its life and to make sure that no matter what wheel you're riding, you know that you're going to get the most out of it that you can. I'm also going to be taking a brutal test on my KS18 XL just to find out exactly what two years of hard riding and owner misuse, what impact that has had on the wheel and its battery capacity. How much battery depreciation has it really had and what will I get out of it? So let's get started. we all know that batteries will not live forever and they will depreciate over time we've all got mobile phones after around about two years of use just don't seem to hold their charge and you're looking around for plug sockets every 20 minutes and yes we do blame the big manufacturers for building in this automatic redundancy to help us to be encouraged to buy the next phone but yes we know that batteries will not live forever now i've been riding my ks18 xl for about 18 months two years and i've done well over 2600 miles on that wheel. I estimate I must have plugged it in there for to charge it up anything between 90 to 120 times. Now what impact will all that riding and all that charging have had on the battery? Will it still do what the manufacturers claim it will? Time to find out. Well good morning and in this episode you join me here in Milton Keynes on a very wet and quite cold day it's the middle of August and we've had a heat wave but that now has suddenly disappeared and it's quite wet and horrible and cold but it's not going to put me off because I want to try something now a few episodes back I went out on my 18 XL the King Song 18 XL to see how far it would go and I put a link to that video somewhere I managed to get 50 miles out of it and that was quite impressive but that got me wondering now on the box of the KS 18 XL it says it will do 140 to 150 kilometers. I'm just going to pause now to let that laughter subside. Now if you read the small print on the specs it says if that is ridden at a constant speed in perfect conditions completely flat and by somebody that weighs the same weight as a small child. Now I can't achieve the same weight as a small child, I think it says 70 kilograms, about 11 stone. I'm 82 kilograms, so I'm a little bit over that. But I have found somewhere that is flat. It's a circle, close to where I live. So what I'm going to do, on a perfectly flat surface, I'm going to ride my wheel at a constant speed. And a slow constant speed, I'm not going to go above 15 miles an hour. And I'll go round and round in circles for as long as it takes for my battery to deplete. Now that could take me hours. If I go at 15 miles an hour to go 60 miles, I've got to be doing this for about four hours. This could be the most boring episode of anything that has ever been recorded. Just me going around in circles. So it might be the shortest episode of Wheel Life. Um, and uh, if you're interested, I'll put up um, um, a link to a, something, a, a YouTube clip of, of paint drying that you could tune into instead. But this is an important test. Are they lying to us? Will this wheel get more than 60 miles? Will it get anywhere near 90 miles? Let's see. So I'm not going to bore you more, much more than I already have. I'm going to get on my uh, unicycle. It's fully charged. I'm going to wear a helmet. 
largely because I can listen to an audio book as I go, but keep myself safe and dry because it's a bit wet today. So I'm off now. Uh, I'll see you on the other side. I might chip in as we go, but um, yeah, will this do more than 60 miles in those perfect conditions? With a perfectly weighted person on it. Okay, thank you very much. Let's see. Ten miles in, forty minutes of riding, average speed fifteen point two miles an hour. Uh, it is flipping boring. Listening to an audio book. Uh, the most exciting thing was I dropped my phone, um, and my feet are hurting. And so I'm just adjusting my riding position to put my feet quite forward on the pedals uh, to make it a bit easier. Not much more to report. Oh, the battery is saying 87, 86% left. So if that is right, then I'm potentially on, if I can be, <laughs> if I can keep doing it, on to maybe do something like 60 or 70 miles perhaps, which would be incredible. Uh, yeah, anyway, keep going. Well, there you have it. I mean, I've been going for three hours and 44 minutes and I have done 50 miles. Uh, so I'm not pushing it to speed, but I'm getting distance out of this. And according to the lights on the wheel, I've still got something like maybe 30 or even 40% of my battery remaining. That can't be right. The app uh, wheel log is telling me I've got 10% of battery remaining, but that's not right because I've got four lights lit there. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm it's saying 12% on, on uh, EUC World app. Uh, so there's plenty more miles left in this and I'm going to keep going but not right at this moment um, because I've been doing this for like for three to four hours because I had a break as well so I'm going to take a pause and come back and finish this maybe tomorrow morning the other thing is it's getting quite busy now I started uh, riding at six in the morning and uh, purposely because there were no dog walkers and people around and the other thing is essentially I've been riding around in circles around a kid's playground um, for four hours and um, if I'm honest I'd be highly surprised if at the end of this uh, I've not been reported to the police or my name is on some kind of register uh, riding around in circles around a children's playground for four hours so I'm going to pause it now and then we'll come back and uh, finish it off tomorrow and see how many miles this thing will really do wow I'm going to come back to that experiment in a little while just to find out how I got on with that brutal test. But let's turn our attention now to the batteries. Now, if you ever did look inside a battery pack within an EUC and pull it apart, and please don't do that, dangerous to do so, but you'll find it's made up of what looks like a, a bundle of household Duracell batteries. And they're all daisy chained together into one big energy pack. And your wheel might have two or three of those. And the, ba the battery management system in your wheel will control the flow of that energy. Very, very clever stuff. But most wheels are run with lithium ion batteries, which are basically a cell of electrolyte fluid in which lithium charges lithium ion, which is discharged as the battery it loses its power, uses its power. Um, and batteries are measured in what's called watt hours. And we've all seen those numbers. Uh, watt hours refer to, imagine this bottle is a battery, the watt hours refer to the amount of power it can hold. And then if you hear something called density is the, uh, is the watts per kilogram, which refers to how quickly it can discharge that energy. Those are the two numbers you might have heard of. So basically the bigger those numbers, the more capacity your wheel has got. We all know that. But let's turn our attention now to some top tips to help you look after your batteries and keep them living for longer. And here is my top tip number one. Uh, keep your batteries at room temperature. The biggest killer for batteries is going to be heat. So if you've got, particularly if you've got a fully charged battery, you don't want to leave it somewhere very hot, like in a conservatory or in your car. If you're leaving fully charged batteries at high temperatures, it will cause the batteries to deteriorate far more quickly. So keep your batteries somewhere cool. Keep your wheel out of sunlight and in somewhere cool. 
The second tip is that you should allow your battery to partially discharge often and avoid a full discharge almost always. We'll come back to that. So unlike uh, nickel cadmium batteries, lithium ion batteries don't have what is called a charge memory. So that means if you're doing these deep discharge cycles, that's not required. In fact, it's better for the battery to use up partial charges rather than full cycles. There is one exception. So battery experts do think and suggest that after about every 30 cycles of 30 charges, you should allow your batteries to completely or almost completely discharge. That's because continual partial discharge creates a condition inside the battery called digital memory. And that over time will decrease the accuracy of your measurement gauge within your device. So after about 30 times you've charged it, do allow your wheel to totally discharge or almost totally discharge. And that will help to recalibrate and rebalance the measurement system. And tip number three, you really should avoid total and complete discharge of your batteries. If the lithium ion battery discharges below 2.5 volts per cell, then there's a safety circuit built into the batteries that opens up and that the battery then appears to be dead. And if that is the case, your regular charger won't be able to recharge that battery. You need something called a battery analyzer with a boost function and that gives you the possibility of recharging those batteries. So if you completely, completely charge your batteries to where there is nothing left in them, then that is bad. And also for safety reasons, you should not attempt to recharge a, a completely uh, deeply depleted a discharged lithium ion battery if they've been left for a significant amount of time. So if they've been left empty for months, if you try and recharge them, that can be dangerous. So there's the point. Avoid completely discharging. So when your wheel is tipping you back and telling you to get off, do what it says, because if you keep using it, keep using it, you can actually damage your batteries beyond repair. Okay, here's tip number four. So if you're going to be storing your wheel for any extended period of time, for several weeks or months, I haven't even seen for days, uh, don't store it at full capacity, but for a long period, I would deplete the energy to store it at around about 40% capacity. If you're storing a battery fully charged and particularly in a warm place, that means that the oxidization of the lithium ion is at its highest rate. So storing lithium ion batteries at around about 40% discharge is highly recommended, particularly in a cool place. And here's tip number five. And that is that you should never charge your battery fully. And I can't even look you in the eyes when I'm telling you this. Now experts do say that you should never charge a lithium ion battery to more than 80% because repeated charging to 100% over time will put additional stressors on the battery and it can reduce the amount of recharge cycles that a battery will have. What do I do? Well, I think like every other rider, I charge my wheel to 100% every single time I charge it. And the reasons for that is, well, the damage to, to that battery is going to be negligible. And over its lifespan, maybe I'm going to change my wheel every two or three years to get a new one. So in that amount of time, it's not going to do significant damage. The other thing is, if I've got a wheel that's got a range of 50 miles and I cut off that top 20%, it's only going to give me 40 miles. And bear in mind, the last 20% of the battery is going to start tipping you back and slowing you down. So who wants that? So I always charge mine fully every single time and don't forget there is a battery management system in every wheel and that will control the power going back into the battery as well as going out of it so when your battery is charging up imagine this bottle of water being filled up with water it will rapidly charge the battery to around about 85 90 percent and then it slows down the last 10 percent or so to stop the damage to the battery so just like this bottle if you filled it up quickly from the tap it will fill rapidly rapidly and then potentially overflow same with the power. Without that management system to turn it off and slow it down, it can damage the battery. So if you fill the, battery, the, the bottle to so far quickly and then turn the tap off, you'll see you've actually filled it only to there. And then you slowly trickle it up so it doesn't go over the top. And that's what the battery management system should do in each wheel. So for me, I'm always going to charge my wheel to 100% and I'll live with the consequences of that slight bit of damage to the battery. So those are my top five tips for battery care. Let's head back now to that brutal test to see how I really got on 
on the KS18XL. Morning, it's the next day and I am back riding again. I have got four lights on the wheel. I've done 50 miles so far. So I'm just gonna ride now and then uh, we'll join me at the end um, or on the way to see how far this wheel will actually go. Right, I'm officially calling an end to the test now because it's 10 past eight. Your device is low battery. Please charge it. On a Sunday morning, and I'm riding this wheel around uh, a, a very quiet, urbanized area um, with this foghorn going off saying, I need to recharge my wheel. And it's really making enemies. I can see people starting to look out the windows with angry looks on their faces. So um, I'm gonna, Close to close. I've done 62 miles. It's Your down. device is low battery. Please charge it. Your device is low battery. Please charge it. Your device is low battery. Please charge it. So the results are in, and I'm certainly not disappointed with that. So that wheel actually gave me, by the time I finished, about 65 miles. By the time I got home and did a bit more pootling around, gave me 65 miles that is impressive for a wheel that's been ridden for over two and a half thousand miles and has been charged maybe 120 times the batteries there are doing well and not showing an awful lot of uh, signs of depreciation so i'm pleased with that but these wheels are never going to do what the manufacturers say on the box unless you live somewhere like holland where it's completely flat you know we're going to be going up and down hills but here are the top tips i guess for uh, for getting the most out of your battery that is number one i guess is to lose a bit of weight uh, because if you're carrying a lot of weight, then uh, it's going to eat, eat into your battery more. So maybe I need to lose a few pounds. Nobody wants to hear that. The next thing is go at a constant speed. If you are going quickly and then braking, quickly then braking, that's using far more power and will give you less distance. And also knock back that top speed. If you're going 25 miles an hour, you won't go as far. So if it's distance you're looking for, then that's the way to go about it. But most of us get on these wheels, have a blast. And actually, it's not very often we're all going to go out there and do 50 miles or try and do 60 miles. So hopefully there's some good tips there for you to extend the life of your battery, look after your batteries, look after your wheels. If you have found something useful, you've enjoyed that, give me a thumbs up, click and subscribe and all the rest of it. If you've not liked it, that's fine. Give me a thumbs down, but please tell me why. Don't just give me a thumbs down and then run away. Tell me why you didn't like it, because I really do want to make these videos better and better every time I do them. So thank you for watching and I hope you join me next time on Wheel Life.